Hello guys, welcome to the recap of uh, game 6, the World Chess Championship match between Yan Nepomnishi and Dean Lejeune. And the score is equal once again. And the match becoming more and more interesting and even for me. If uh, previously it was like, okay, I'm gonna do, like, I'm gonna explain some things uh, recording the videos, but but now it's really interesting and I am impressed with quality of the last uh, three games. Um, both players played really well with white. Uh, last three games, I mean. And uh, even the one who played uh, black, he was, uh, he was under some pressure and that was the main reason why he lost the game. However, especially last two games, it's even hard to uh, hard to suggest like what was the critical mistake it was just like uh, white slowly outplayed black and that's it and let's take a look at today's game d4 knight f6 knight f3 d5 bishop f4 the london system yeah and now i i think uh, a lot of players played uh, since uh, it's a uh, uh, it's an opening for lazy people. You don't need to learn anything. You need to know only like one and a half idea. Uh, when I was young, I, I I was playing bishop g5 and we called it as uh, an opening of uh, queen's pawn. So bishop g5 and ideas is quite... Uh, and, and the ideas are quite uh, similar to the London system. So bishop f4 c5 e3 knight c6 knight bd2 and here black has some different options for example knight h5 queen b6 is a critical line grabbing the pawn on b2 uh, cd4 is also possible a solid continuation bishop f5 c3 e6 and uh, a rising pawn structure reminds us uh, several different uh, openings, for example, Karakan and also Queen's Gambit exchanged. Let me explain you. First of all, if we talk about Karakan, then for example, e4, c6, d4, d5, and the exchange variation of the Karakan, let's say knight f3. Uh, I'm not really specialist here, but uh, let's say black plays either, I don't know, knight f6, for example, white plays uh let's say somewhere they play h3 somewhere bishop d3 but okay let's say c3 knight c6 bishop uh, d3 now usually black is able to develop his bishop so for example bishop f5 uh, bishop f4 e6 and now we got uh, just um, a similar pawn structure and maybe even uh just the same position if white plays knight d2 knight c6 and uh, let's uh, let's compare it with the position from the game yeah just uh, exactly this position and another interesting thing that um, let's say white plays d4 black plays d5 c4 e6 knight c3 knight f6 c takes d5 e takes d5 then for example bishop g5 c6 is c6 e3 and here we have a similar position just reversed so for example if uh, black plays uh, here bishop f5 is a bad move since uh, there is queen f3 but let's say let's imagine that uh, white just continued knight f3 knight d7 and uh, with let's say with bishop on d3 or just maybe with white bishop on f4 it would be quite similar position but reversed so here if you imagine instead of white pieces black pieces and instead of black pieces white pieces then we would uh, have a position from queen's gambit exchange variation just reversed so bishop b5 um, queen b3 then black could go for bishop d6 this is uh, something important as, as far as i know uh, and then, for example, if queen b7, then bishop f4, queen takes, and king f8. Then g6, king goes to g7, or even, even g5, then it could be h5. 
white is a pawn up, but uh, black has uh, a great compensation and uh, an excellent play on the queen side. And also a, a bishop pair. Probably that's why white played bishop b5. Now still bishop d6, trade in the bishop, why not? Yeah, queen takes d6, castle, castle. White played rook e1, taking control over the e-file. And uh, the e-file is uh, a semi-open file. So placing your rook to the semi-open file. If there is no open file, it's always a good idea. h6. Not not really sure if this move is necessary. Uh, idea is quite clear, just uh, trying to save the bishops and, for example, not allowing uh, white to play knight h4 at some point, uh, grabbing the bishop. However, however, it's an interesting thing that um, this bishop on f5, for many openings, such as um, Slav defense, Karakan, um, Queen's Gambit, yeah, and some other openings. This bishop, a uh, French defense, of course, uh, this bishop is a terrible one. So, in fact, in fact, it's a good idea to trade it for anything. Okay, but uh, no, of, of course not pawn, but uh, Still, trading for anything would be good. So that's why, that's why I would suggest here maybe a, a weird move, but bishop g4. And I don't see anything wrong about playing such a move. So for example, h3, maybe we even, uh, we are even not forced to take uh, on f3, but even taking, just taking knight f3, and then maybe a6. Kicking away the bishop. Uh, if bishop c6, then we can even take with uh, the c, uh, the b7 pawn. Uh, maybe white could try to play b4, stopping c5, but then we go a5, a3, then we can just take on b4, and everything more or less okay. Maybe next move either knight e4, attacking the c3 pawn, or knight d7, so not allowing the white knight to go to e5. So remember that. Um, this bishop is a terrible one for many openings and uh, whenever we have a chance to trade it, even for the knight, it's usually a good idea. Just, it's not like we go and trade it uh, like immediately. Sometimes we kind of waiting, trying to win some time and so on. And it also, de it also depends on the concrete position, concrete situation. Um, so, bishop g4, maybe it's not the best move. But uh, after this move, situation is quite, uh, quite clear. It's quite clear what to do. And uh, also, for example, here after h3, bishop takes knight f3, a6. For example, white could play bishop d3. Of course, why he needs to trade the bishop, right? And the idea is still maybe to go for knight e5. And here there are several interesting ideas for black. Um, like one of them would be just to play b5 since we have reversed uh, queen's gambit uh, position actually it is just a car's blood we have here so if you remember game three of the match there uh, it was car's uh, blood there and here we have just reversed position and uh, black's idea usually is to go for minority attack so a5 b4 attacking the c3 pawn of course uh, white uh, uh, wouldn't allow black to do it uh, easily at least uh, but still b4 is coming so next move rook b8 then a5 then b4 maybe white could play knight e5 then black maybe knight d7 and the position is more or less okay, more or less okay for black. No, nothing, nothing wrong. Also, it's uh, it could be interesting to play queen c7, such a uh, small move. The idea is to get ready to face knight e5 jump. So if white plays knight e5, we just take on e5. Rook e5, everything is okay. We have the knight on f6. Uh, who is protecting the king and we can still go for b5 a5 kind of distracting white from play on the king side 
If pawn takes, it's uh, nothing dangerous, nothing dangerous at all. Uh, the king is still safe. Uh, at some point, we could play g6 if that uh, uh, will be necessary. And still uh, b5, a5, b4, distracting white from uh, easy play on the king side. Maybe knight c5 at some point. Why do I pay attention to this moment? Since actually after h6, knight e5, uh, at some moment, Nepa did uh, like inaccuracy. And he did that inaccuracy since the position was uh, maybe not that obvious what to do. So let's see, knight e7, a4. And here he played a6, bishop f1, and knight d7. Knight d7 is a, a mistake, I think, a positional mistake. And it was even better to play something like a5, still fixing the pawn structure and not allowing white to play a5 himself. Like one thing you can um, remember from this video, uh, to learn from this video, then it's about this light squared bishop. It doesn't mean that you need to, to run to trade it, but uh, something to keep in mind. I would I would just play here Bishop G4, such a like a, a stupid move, uh, uh, just uh, getting rid of this bishop, and that's it. Uh, trading one of the knights who gonna occupy the E5 square. So knight d7, queen d7, a5, fixing the pawn structure and securing the c5 square for the knight. So black played queen c7, and now it's like it's too late, apologize. Yeah. So queen f3, okay, maybe not really necessary move. Maybe white could play uh, knight b3, but it's okay. Queen uh, rook a3 first, bishop g6, and finally knight b3. Maybe he was kind of a like a bit afraid of uh, being in rush with knight b3 since uh, it could be b6 and uh, the knight on b3 is unprotected so maybe this is the idea of rook a3 move just to to protect the b3 square now knight b3 the knight is heading for the c5 square uh, queen g3 since uh, a5 pawn is under pressure and so knight c5 is not possible immediately queen g3 trading queens wouldn't uh, um, wouldn't make uh, black's life easier since after a g3 still knight is going to c5 b4 and then at some point it could be b5 for example white can also go forward or uh, maybe like g4 f3 king f2 and so on on the king side maybe even f4 at some point so queen e7, h4, just maybe a useful move and uh, making a, rook, a room for the king. Rook e8 and finally knight c5. And uh, whenever we have a worse position, we have a choice. Just to wait, so playing passive chess and wait, or trying to break and trying to escape. And it's interesting that in most cases it's better just to wait. So, uh, like, Nepa played e5, and um, it was uh, no problems for white to win this game. Um, of course, uh, if, uh, if the answer is to wait, then what to do? Also not that clear, yeah? And unfortunately for black, it's really hard to trade this knight, this annoying knight on a5. And you remember I told you to, like, just to play when the, when the bishop was placed on f5 just to play bishop g4 trade in this stupid bishop and uh, okay have an easy life like maybe it's not a recipe for nepa but it's definitely a good recipe for uh, low rated players just trade this stupid bishop and uh, have an easy life so he tried to escape with e5 but rook b3 uh, white could even play b4 it was also fine uh, but rook b3 is uh, more concrete since attacking the pawn on b7. So knight a5, rook takes e5, queen f6, rook a3. And what happened after trading the e6 pawn for the a5 pawn? Now I would like to pay your attention to the pawn structure. You see the d5 pawn is a, a weakness and uh, now black has more pawn islands. Yeah, so black has three pawn islands, 
this one, this one, and this one, while white has two pawn islands. And overall, white has such a strong dark square, uh, dark squared strategy. Similarly, as it was in um, in the previous game when Nepo placed all his pieces to the light squares, it all it was also quite nice. So, so and here it's actually just uh, if knight c6, then maybe even rook d5. I don't know, maybe rook e8 and taken on b7. So everything is hanging for for black. So it's definitely there is something. So knight c4, bishop c4, d c4, h5. And saying hello to this, uh, be, be, like to this uh, great guy on g6. So bishop c2, just knight b7. Finally grabbing some material. Queen b6, knight d6. The knight on d6 is untouchable. Then rook takes e8. Rook e5, queen takes e5. Queen b2, rook a5. And it's still um, white is better in terms of. Uh, strategy his pieces are better placed and also now there is an issue with the black king yeah since for example there is a possibility of knight takes f7 followed by queen d5 check uh there is possibility of just uh, playing queen e7 also there are some mating ideas uh, around uh, the king yeah for example, knight e8, attacking the pawn on g7. That's why black play king h7, removing the king on but rook c5, queen c1 check, king h2, f6, queen g3. And uh, overall, you see, what is black's problem? Black has a lot of problems. It is pawn structure, it is... Um, that uh, the c4 pawn is weak, the a6 pawn is also kind of weak. Another big problem is the black king, who is actually quite weak. And so black has a lot of weaknesses and it's hard to protect everything. The rest is matter of technique, yeah, as we used to say, a5, knight takes, a4, knight e3. Of course, this pawn is only only black's chance. However, the king is pretty bad. So, for example, there is th a threat of rook c7. Uh, knight e3 was uh, a nice move in terms of uh, pre preventing queen g5 possibility. Yeah, so rook c7, queen g5. So bishop b1. Okay, now rook c7, rook g8, knight d5 threatening. Knight takes f6. So king h8, rook a7. A3, knight is 7 attacking the rook, and d5. It was already possible to play knight g6, but not a big deal, d5. So White's position is just uh, winning. A2, queen c7, and knight g6, rook g8, queen f7 is quite nice, since, uh, for example, if black just plays any move, then queen takes g8, king g8, followed by rook a8, and uh, checkmate on f8 or h8 depends on the king's move and if uh, bishop takes g6 h takes g6 king h8 queen takes king takes and rook takes uh, not rook takes but rook a8 checkmate as i mentioned uh, like one more good game and uh, it's surprising that we have a lot of decisive games uh, four games out of six in this match. So it even seems that uh, it was a good idea by uh, Carlsen not to play this match since we finally have some exciting chess. Even though we know that Carlsen is still the boss of chess, but uh, the match is exciting and the players play really well, especially with white. <laughs> Somehow with black, they are not that good about holding. But uh, once again, you see it just like it's some small inaccuracies and then uh, there are some problems. It was similar in uh, the previous game and uh, in game four it was also Black, uh, Black was under some pressure and uh, in the end he did a mistake. So it's like really good, good play by White in this match, starting from round uh, four.